Welcome everybody. My topic is the up-to-date strategies in the injection therapy of partial cough tears and the prevention of cutibacterium acne around the shoulder. My name is Victor Winninger and I am from the orthopedic department Semmelweis University and my supervisor is Gabor Kalitsky. Our mission to use fewer third injection in practice and reduce the cutibacterium acne culture around the shoulder and the fewer side effects in patients thanks to fewer steroid injection and less frequent surgical side infection due to less C acne. We have two main topics and both of them are systematic review and network meta-analysis. Let's talk about the first one, the hyaluronate and combination are superior to steroids in the injection therapy of partial rotator cuff tear. Uh, rotator cuff disorders elevating with the aging and uh, actually the first step uh, treatment is the conservative treatment. The gold standard in our practice, the subacromary uh, corticosteroid injection. Corticosteroid injection have many side effects. All of you know that, I think. Uh, so that's our aim is compare the different substances, use the patient with partial rotator cuff tears. We would like to substitute the steroid injection with other agent. The population was the partial cuff tear and we, we uh, compared the corticosteroid with hyaluronic acid, PRP, the combination of hyaluronic acid plus PRP, regenerative cells and saline. We made our search at October 2021 and finally we find seven different art articles, uh, almost 500 different patients. The first outcome, we investigated the visual analog scale, 0 to 10, uh, and 0 is the best, 10 the worst point. As you can see, for short term, for four weeks, the hyaluronic acid plus PRP combination have a significant better outcome than the steroid injection and than the saline, which is the placebo. For longer term, after a half year, there was no any significant difference between the saline and the, and the other uh, injection, but the hyaluronic acid plus PRP also showed the better result. Constant Merlis score, it's more about the movement of the sh shoulder. It contains the movement of the shoulder and the, the, the pain of the shoulder. For short term, the PRP, hyaluronic acid, and hyaluronic acid plus PRP showed better result for short term for three months, but also half years later, there was no any significant difference. And finally, the ACES score, it contains not only the range of motion, the, the pain of the shoulder, it's also contained the general feeling of the patient with the shoulder. Uh, we didn't have any significant better result, but the combination also showed very good and a better result than the, the saline or the steroid. So, of course, we have strengths and limitation. Uh, let's talk about the strengths. We compared, all, we compared many different drugs against placebo, and we investigated only partial cough tear. The tendinitis, tendinitis tendinosis, and the full tear was excluded. Unfortunately, we have limitation. It's only seven different articles and uh, multiple active ingredients were used in steroid groups. It, it's a big limitation of our article, uh, but of course, that's why we have just, we have just some suggestion to, to make some uh, randomized trial with very uh, little patient group who have only partial cuff tear and use only one type of steroid injection. Based on our result, the combination of hyaluronic acid plus PRP uh, advisable to use for, for partial cuff tear uh, conservative treatment. Yes. So let's, here is our manuscript status. Uh, it was in rev revision at the journal, the Journal of Bone and Mineral Research, but unfortunately, unfortunately the, they refused it. So the next step, we are going to send it to the shoulder and elbow surgery, and hopefully they will accept it. 
Let's talk about the second topic, the peroxid skin preparation reduce the incidence of sea acne around the shoulder. After the shoulder surgery, about 1%, some kind of uh, complication occurring. Uh, and the most common organism is the C. acnes. C. acnes is a gram-positive anaerobic bacter, which lives in the sebaceous gland. Or alcohol-based skin preparation, ineffective against C. acnes. That's why we have to give an additional skin preparation uh, peroxid, uh, additional peroxid skin preparation to reduce the sea acne's germ around the shoulder. Our hypothesis that the peroxid skin preparation reduce the germ count of the sea acne's around the shoulder and less sea acne's in the shoulder leads to less subsequent infection. We did our research and we have 10 different articles. Uh, seven dif uh, seven different interventions, and almost 1,000 patients, what we compared. Uh, yes, the, the seven different interventions was the chlorhexidine, 5% benzoyl peroxide, 10% benzoyl peroxide, 5% uh, benzoyl peroxide plus clindamycin, physohex, 5% benzoyl peroxide plus myconazole nitrite, and hydrogen peroxide. Uh, this graph shows the presence of sea acnes on the skin of the shoulder. And you can see that the 5% benzoyl peroxide plus clindamycin and only 5% benzoyl peroxide have a very good result to reduce the sea acnes germ, germ. And the ranking graph shows also that the 5% BPO was the best uh, peroxide solution to reduce it. Uh, we have strengths and limitations. This is the very first research with several different additional skin preparation. And we, we investigated not only the 5% BPO, also the combination and different concentration of the BPO. And uh, we have a potential to reduce the, the germ, germ count of the sea acnes. We have only 10 different articles and uh, there is another problem. We have a different time frame. If we roll back or jump back, you can see here that uh, the BPO and clindamycin combination we used, it was two days before the surgery, two times a day. And uh, we had three different articles with 5% BPO. The first one used single application of BPO. The second one used three different day BPO, twice a day, and the uh, third, article used two days before the surgery, twice a day, the BPO. So it could be a limitation. We, have do, we don't have the, the strict time frame, which uh, how many days should we use the BPO? So we, it's advisable to, to su supplement the alcohol-based deficient uh, to use skin preparation. And uh, based on our result, we are planning a randomized trial and uh, we would like to investigate the time frame it's necessary to use the BPO. Yes, we have an opportunity to reduce the sea acnes, uh, and uh, the use of the BPOs in practice should be considered, uh, but of course further RCTs are need needed or necessary, and it's necessary to investigate the dermis and the joint culture also, not only the skin and we have to find the optimal application time. Yes, that was our two main topics. Thank you very much for your attention and wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a very nice presentation, congratulations. I just wanted to ask, maybe I've missed that information, but uh, did you find any data regarding lower um, concentrations of benzoyl peroxide in the literature because as far as I know, a lower percentage, percentage is also as effective as the five percentage and uh, has less effects in the long, long run. If but maybe there wasn't enough data, I'm just wondering. Um, if I understood you correctly, you asked it why we 
investigate the 5% of benzoyl peroxide? Yes, or if there was any data about the lower uh, percentages? There was no any data with okay. lower person, and uh, if you go to the, um, the shop, you can buy this ointment with 5%. Yes, in Hungary, I, I yes. know. Yes, yes. Because the dermatologists use the 5% uh, um, BPO to reuse the, the C. acnes germ on the face. Yes, okay, thank you. Thank you very much. My question would be, uh, in the first topic, yeah. uh, all the patient has got some additional uh, uh, physiotherapy yes. as well, yes, and so was the physiotherapy uh, uniform or different? Unfortunately, for yes, how long? yes, it's a very good question, and thank you for it. Unfortunately, it was seven different articles for, from seven different authors. That's why there was no uh, same physiotherapy. Uh, we have no information what was the exactly physiotherapy, what kind of uh, physiotherapy they used. We know that only that they used physiotherapy, but what kind of, or pro was it a professional physiotherapy or, or just uh, basic? We, we have no information, unfortunately. Okay, thank you very much. And the second question is that, uh, uh, have, you, uh, have you read about um, uh, some side effect of the PRP uh, injections? In these articles, there was no any side effects. There was no any inflammation or, or um, any other problem with the PRP. And uh, the problem with the PRP was the same than the steroid. The production time was, or the productive production uh, movement was also different in different articles. So there was those articles they used two minutes uh, the centrifugated. The other article used three minutes centrifugated the blood. So it's a bit different, I, I know, but it's very hard to to make a homogeneous um, PRP making. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. Victor.